so the story how this all came to pass is, is is pretty interesting. It's you know I moved back from Oklahoma or from New York to Oklahoma, my home state, and and I've been looking for for artists and people around in the area that are you know uh, that are motivated and and do great things and you know want to make great cultural things happen here in Tulsa. Uh, and I started looking around and I kept seeing Danny Boy O'Connor, Danny Boy O'Connor, and I'm like the guy from House of Pain. Like really, I didn't even know he lived in Tulsa. So um, one night. My wife, Holly, was like, hey, uh, I see on Instagram, uh, Danny Boy O'Connor from House of Pain, he's having a birthday party at a roller skating rink. And I was like, wow, all of that sounds amazing. So let's go. So we got in the car and we went to the roller skating rink and we rented skates and we skated around. And all of a sudden you see this eight foot tall dude on, because you add the foot of skates to seven foot tall Danny and there's this giant skating. I'm like, that's obviously him. So we, you know, we had fun, we had a few drinks, and then at the end of the night, I went up and told him happy birthday, here's my card. Uh, I'm an artist in Tulsa, like, let's talk. Uh, turns out he owns The Outsider's House, which is one of my favorite films. So all of these little synchronicities started coming together. Uh, so my wife and I, we went over to the, uh, to the Outsider's House. It's an absolute amazing museum. I mean, the level of detail in this place is phenomenal. Um, really impressive stuff. So. Uh, we're looking around and then I met Danny for real there. I'm like, yeah, I'm the guy from Instagram. I'm the guy that was at your party. Uh, and we just got along. Like I lived in New York for, for a long time. He's from New York. Um, you know, so we, yeah, we just kind of hit it off and we started talking. He's like, yo, I got this concept. I want to try and get this uh, original fountain from the outsiders. It's in somebody's front yard being used as a plant, uh, a, a potted plant holder. I found out that the fountain wasn't a real fountain in the park. Uh, it was like urban legend. Some people said, no, no, it was at the park. Some people thought it was at a different park. There is a fountain over here on uh, Peoria, and I think it's uh, 11th. Mm -hmm. um, after doing a little research, I found an article where they were trying to save it in the park, meaning it was built for the movie. Uh, some people in the public wanted to, to wanted it to stay there in honor of, you know, the outsiders and them mm -hmm. filming. Uh, one of the guys who started the petition in particular is a gentleman named uh, Joe Cervantes, who has a really cool photo collection. He was an extra in both movies, Rumblefish and The Outsiders, and he has really cool outsiders photos and Rumblefish photos. So he's also an archivist and a documentarian by default. Uh, he, he was the one who, who petitioned the city to leave it there, but I guess the guy who built it, Daryl, who we're about to meet, uh, disagreed and thought people would get hurt in it, so he dismantled it and took it home. And that's where it sat for about 35, 36 years until I went looking for him. We did not know if he still had any of the pieces, and legend had it that he still had the centerpiece, which we're gonna see later today. And so when we called him, we were able to get his phone number. First, we got his name. We found out he worked for a pool making company or a pool maker, or he was, he, that was the business he was in at the time, making pools. So he was right to make the fountain. Um, we called him, we said, we want to see it. The way I remember it, it was like, yeah, I'm busy. Called again, yeah, I'm kind of busy. Third time he's like, yeah, you can come see it, but you can't have it. And we're like, okay, you know, we, we saying that we want it, uh, but we kind of want it, you know. So when I got there, he showed it to me. We had a couple, uh, you know, um, aimless conversations about nothing. And then I finally said, hey, listen, what do you have to have? Uh, he did not, he wouldn't accept any money for it. Uh, as the negotiations went forward, he started to get visibly uh, aggravated and irritated. So I thought, oh, I'll leave this alone. But being the sport he is, he says, well, I won't give you this. Uh, my mother adores it. She's growing her flowers in it. Uh, I will give you what you don't know I have, which is the coping, which is hand poured. It was eight, possibly nine. There might have been a damaged one, so he had nine. Uh, the top of the fountain that's built in the park uh, in the movie. So I uh, called a couple buddies. We ended up getting a trailer and we lifted it. They're, I think they're 800 pounds per piece. And they're in the corner of the Outsiders House Museum on the property now. But what we were missing was that centerpiece. So every couple, uh, every six to eight months, I give him a jingle. I have a buddy who works for me, give him a jingle. And uh, we just kept bothering him. And then we kind of left him alone. And uh, I heard, uh, you know, his mom had passed away. God rest her soul. And I thought, well, now's the time to ask him again about the fountain uh, piece. And he said, well, my mom did pass, and I did tell you that she was kind of partial to it, but now you have another woman to worry about. Uh, I said, who's that? He said, my wife. I said, well, I, I think I can take her, send her my way. 
I don't think he was amused with that neither. And he said, no, you can't have it. So long story longer, um, in the last couple weeks, you know, I met Tate. Uh, he had been asking about trying to figure a way he could make something for the Outsiders House Museum. We weren't quite sure what that would be because he makes such amazing horror film stuff. And I didn't know the fit for that. And then after a series of little coincidences, I don't really believe in coincidence, but you get what I'm saying. Um, there's something in Sepulpita that was a damage and it was seen in the movie Rumblefish. And that's another reveal, but we're gonna, tomorrow we're gonna deal with that and get that. So the universe has been giving all kinds of good stuff to be saved to us so that we could put it in a future museum. And I felt so good coming off of that, that we were gonna get that and be able to save that, that I thought, you know what? I'm gonna call old Daryl about that fountain again because I was on such high that, what do I got to lose, right? Better ask him tell me no again. So I called and the first thing he said was, Danny, no. So I said, Daryl, hold on. What if? And I said, what if we have somebody make a mold of it and I make a, a copy of it? And he said, his tone changed. He said, well, who's gonna make the mold? And I said, well, I don't really, I, I know his name is Tate. Tate who? I said, I don't know, let me, he says, have him call me. So apparently Tate called him and an hour and a half into the conversation, they realized they were all speaking the same language. Apparently the guy who makes pools, Tate used to do some kind of pool making. This guy used to do some kind of mold making. So then, then now they're locked in, they're speaking the same language. So he agrees. He says, Danny, I'll be over there on Tuesday, which today is Tuesday. So I'm a little, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I get into it because I'm a 13 year old kid who loves, you know, uh, greasy stuff like that and I grew up in a broken home my father was in prison and my mother didn't want kids and I was kind of free range and a latchkey kid is, is, is an 80s term for what they called kids like me where it was basically don't lose the key and don't wake me up when you come in and so I was always out running amok in the neighborhood and uh, you know you try to form that family that you don't have inside outside and so when I saw the outsiders as a 13 year old kid uh, I thought if this is the best life gets, I'll be okay with that. Running around with Dallas Winston, sneaking into movies, smoking uh, non-filters, wearing denim, and do, you know, rumbling in the park. I'm good. I'm cool with that. So, see, I'm I'm equally as happy with the copy coming from the original, so that we can restore this fountain, and we'll still have to build the whole brand new fountain again, which is the hard part. But we'll have the original coping scene in the movie, and we'll have an, a, an exact replica of the centerpiece from Daryl, made from. My man Tate now, who if you look around and, and, and see all the stuff he's doing here, you know that he's capable of doing it. We will always have that mold in case something happens, God forbid, to the, the copy, we, we were able to make another one. I mean, I'm like a little kid in a candy store right now. I, I don't know how uh, visibly excited I look, but I'm super excited because this is a long time coming. And, and, and it's really not for me, it's for the greater good. It's for Tulsa, Oklahoma. It is for all the fans of The Outsiders. It's all the fans of Essie Hinton. It's all the fans of Coppola, Matt Dillon, Ralph Macho, C. Thomas Howell, Diane Lane, Patrick Swayze, so on and so on. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a testament to what a little 15 and a half year old girl named Susan Eloise Hinton did, failing English with the D plus in creative writing and wrote the first ever young adult novel. It was the first time in literary history in 1967 when she published The Outsiders that a young adult wrote about being a young adult for young adult. And in doing so, she's changed the world. She's definitely changed my life for the better. And I know because I see the faces of people who come through our museum every day. I'm going to make a mold of this. We're going to capture and preserve the detail of this forever in a mold. Uh, and then we're going to recast it and we're going to make one for the outsider's house. So Danny can, um, you know, recreate the fountain scene, the, the famous scene where the, the Sochas and the Greasers were fighting, the rumble. My name's Tate Steinzik, Oklahoma artist. Uh, find me on Instagram at Tate Steinzik. Uh, find me on my website at illwild.com. That's I-L-L-W-I-L-L-E-D.com. And uh, do yourself a favor, go to the Outsiders Museum in Tulsa. It's absolutely fantastic, and it's open now uh, during the summer on weekends. Check it out.